there is a drug that, you, that at least a mouse can take to stay young longer. And that might mean that it wouldn't be too hard to make drugs like this for people. My name is Cynthia Kenyon, and I work at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm the, in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics. Um, and I'm an American Cancer Society research professor and the director of the Hillbloom Center for the Biology of Aging at UCSF. We started working on aging um, about in the early 1990s. And at the time, um, people thought that you just wore out. There was nothing really interesting to study at all. If you studied aging, you were looking at things deteriorating, and that was it. But um, most of the things that happen in biology happen under the control of the genes. Um, so for example, the way cells multiply in the body or the way nerve cells grow or muscles grow, it's all controlled by the genes. And if you look at different kinds of animals, what you see is they have very different lifespans. So you live a lot longer than your dog lives, for example. Um, and then there are turtles that live a lot longer than we live. So like they can be 200. So what are these genes that are affecting aging? They must be there because these animals um, have different species and they differ because of their genes. So we decided about, you know, in the early 1990s to look for these genes, genes that affected aging. And the way we did it was to take a small organism called C. elegans, a little roundworm, and um, we just changed genes at random looking for gene changes that would increase lifespan. And th there was known to be one gene that affected lifespan, but not much was known about it. And so we decided to look for others. And we, what we did was we, um, we did what I said, we looked for long-lived mutants, that is, animals where a gene was changed, that's called a mutant, and we found one that lived twice as long as normal. And everything about it seemed fine. It was almost completely fertile, it was healthy, and it was active. It, it just took, it's as though it took two years, two, sorry, two days for the worm to age as much as it would normally age in one day. So normally they live about two weeks, this one lived a month. But it's, when you looked at the animal at the time when a normal worm would be in the nursing home. This one was still, you know, youthful. It was on the golf course or the tennis court. So this started a whole, a new way of thinking about aging, really. The idea that um, aging was somehow controlled by specific genes, because we change only one gene out of all 20,000 and we double the lifespan. And so now the question was, what do these genes do? And do they, can we change the lifespan and the aging rate of an animal besides just a little worm? And so um, the, we know now what the genes do. Uh, this one gene, um, it, it allows the, um, the animals to respond to hormones. It turns out there are hormones that speed up the aging of the animal. And if the cells are, are less sensitive to the hormones, then the animal lives longer and ages more slowly. The reason that you probably age and die, we're not really sure, but probably, is because the mechanisms that take care of your cells and their components when you're young stop working so well and then things just go bad. And when you change these genes, either this first gene called DAF2 or the second gene, DAF16, what you can do is you can change the body's ability to protect itself. So it's as though the animal has within it the ability to live much longer than it normally does. In fact, we've gotten worms to live six times as long as normal now. And again, they stay really young for the longest time. So it's quite amazing. And also the other thing is it turns out it's not just a worm thing. You can change these genes in fruit flies or mice and cause them to live longer. Mice are good because they're mammals like, like us. And it turns out that if you look at, at people who live to be 100, um, yeah, the people who live to be exceptionally long, what you find is that often they have varied forms of these two genes, the DAF2 and DAF16 genes. So it looks as though the, the same proteins that can be used to double the worm's lifespan or drastically extend the lifespan of a fly or a mouse if you change them are in people and they're impacting our lifespan as well. So, and it's not just these two genes that we found. Actually, lots of labs now have found many genes that affect lifespan. And there's another one called TOR that affects lifespan. TOR, like the ones I told you about, are they're nutrient-sensing proteins. Basically, the, the underlying concept here is that when you make these changes in these genes, you, you create a danger signal in the animal. The animal thinks that it's under threat, so it rolls out the protection, and that causes it to be resistant to threats from the environment. Um, like, for example, high temperature or infections or um, free radical damage, uh, 
oxidative damage. Um, but it also protects it from its own damage inside of itself, which keeps it young. But anyway, this other one, TOR, this other nutrient sensor, um, if you in inhibit its activity, worms live long, flies live long, mice live long. And there's a drug that knocks its activity down called rapamycin. And if you give these drugs to mice, even if they're pretty old when you start, the mice live longer. So that's, that's pretty exciting because this is a drug, it's actually an approved drug in America. The problem with it is that it suppresses the immune system. It's approved so that people who have organ transplants can take it so their body doesn't reject the, the foreign organ. Um, so it might not be good for everybody to take because it might depress your immune system. But at the same time, um, it's neat to know that there is a drug that, you, that at least a mouse can take to stay, long, to stay young longer. And that might mean that it wouldn't be too hard to make drugs like this for people.